When the original Mini was launched in 1959, it was a basic family car. When BMW came along in 2000 with their version, it was much more sophisticated. Today, we're going to look at a car which blends that sophistication of BMW with a classic Mini. I think for many of you, it's something you've not seen before. I'm Trevor, and this is a brand new 7Spot video. Before we take a close look at this really special Mini, let's see the car in action. This car is owned by Ben and Tony Bonfield. They have raced this car for a number of years and hold several class records and have had many class wins in it. We can see the car here in action at Shelsey Walsh. Shelsey Walsh was first used in 1905 and is the longest continuously used motorsport venue in the world. From the bottom to the top is just 1,000 yards or 914 metres and is typical of the UK style hill climbs which the Bonfields compete in with this car. That's the car in action. Let's see a little bit more detail about it. OK, Ben, before we talk about your really exciting Mini here, can you give me a bit of an insight into going hill climbing? Now, I understand European and American hill climbing, they run on a lot longer tracks. A lot of them have easier closed road rules. In the UK, we seem to have much shorter tracks, up to around about a mile. And that obviously means we have slightly different disciplines. Um, but also, when you start digging into it and looking at things like the RAC Blue Book, it gives you really complicated car classes for all sorts of different cars. So could you just give me a quick understanding? Say I come along and I've got my ordinary 1.4 Corsa. Could I come along and join in the racing? Um, you could do, yes. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from using a completely standard road car, uh, so long as you carry the same, the correct safety equipment, so crash helmet, overalls, things like that. But there's nothing stopping you. Uh, you can fit a timing strut to the front, which is a beam breaker. It, what it does is it starts the clock, stops the clock when you get through the finish. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's nothing stopping you from using just uh, your, your normal road car. It is, it is, it's not a turn up and go racing uh, i'd love it to be a turn up and go racing you still have to to register for the events but yeah as as far as that yeah that's that's your major hurdle and that's it so if i got hooked using my normal road car with mot and everything else where are the next steps that i work my way up because we're going to look later at some of the single seaters that you've got ben and i'm interested to know the steps to get from say my corsa through maybe like the mini we're looking at here onto the single seaters. What are the rungs of the ladder? Yeah, I mean, so a lot of people do start off in road going um, and then you can move to modified, uh, modified cars, modified production and modified kit cars, things like your caterums, mm -hmm. your Westfields, stuff like that. Um, modified means really you run roll cage, you can run slick tires, um, you can do a lot more performance tuning to the engine, suspension, things like that. Um, and then people will then normally progress from your modified cars, either into what they call sports Libra, so your sports racing cars, up to your single-seater racing cars. Uh, and is there any limitations on respect of CC or cylinders or anything like that? Usually everything is split by capacity. So um, over here... The first class in the southwest is about 1400 cc um, and then that goes 14 to 2 litre uh, or 1400 to 1800 i do apologize um, 18 to then 2.6 and then 2.6 over so um so yeah they do keep in mind with with capacity for cars uh, for single seaters they tend to do it on a different capacity setup because of the bikes bike engines so your bike engines normally go up to 1100 and then 11 to 16. So that would then include your higher boosters and things like that. Okay. And then anything over that is usually car engines. So Vauxhall two liters, there's a separate class for that. So almost if you've got something that's not a road car, that's something a little bit left field, you could turn up at a hill climb meeting. Obviously you've got a pre-enter, I understand that, but you could turn up and they would find you a class to run in. You could find the class to run in, yes. Okay. Um, so long as you meet, 
within the certain safety standards, there's there's normally not a problem for you to run in in a class. Okay. Okay. Well, let's have a look at your classic mini here because this is really mix and match. Yes. Yeah. This has been a well developed project for. Um, I think it was about seven or eight years. We, 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 it took us to, to go from the first initial 16 valve to what this became at the end. So. so how was this car when you acquired it? This car was just a shell. There was nothing in this car. This car was just, there was no wings on it. It was just the, the tub and that was, that was it. There was, there was nothing in it at all. Okay. So before we look at the engine, let's... Uh talk about what you've got going on with suspension because I can see with these wheel arches you've got some really wide wheels and tyres set up here but what's what's behind those? Yeah so we as we plan to keep this car as, as close to the original Mini as, as possible so unlike everybody else we still run the original cones uh, and damper suspension on this so there is nothing trick underneath this car this still has the standard suspension that it rolled off the production line that is absolutely amazing. So has it been lowered at all or is it because the wheels, the wheels are quite a lot larger than the original mini wheels. Yes. So the, bit. the, um, they, with well, this car is fitted with high low, so it does have the adjustable height suspension. Ah, okay. Um, but it's still the original type. So, uh, and we do have camber adjustment on, on fitted on the rear. We have rose joint adjustment on the front, but again, it's set up in the same original style that the classic mini was. So cone dampers on the front as well. So yeah, it still retains a lot of its early features. It's a hard ride. It, I will admit it is a very, very stiff ride, um, but it's so much fun to drive with it. Just you, you drive, you really grank this thing by the scruff of its neck and drive it round corners like you would do with a, with a, a road mini. It, it's just such fun to drive. Well, let's move to the front end and have a look at what is really the exciting bit of this car. Let's have a look under the bonnet. There we go. Oh wow, I've never seen under this one before. I've seen it in action, but I've never actually seen the the engine itself. That looks quite a bit of kit there. So this is a, a, a BMW motorcycle 1200 cc sixteen valve yeah, sixteen head. valve head yeah. on the original A series block underneath. Yes. So the original engine was twelve seventy five cc. Yeah. Overhead um valve uh, yes. with so we push rods and rockers yeah and produced around 59 horsepower yeah so i understand putting the 16 or putting the eight valve head on you'll get about 105 horsepower straight away yep. and about 120 horsepower with 16 valve yes but you say this one's been bored out this one's been bored out to 1380 um so this one is a full-blown race engine um it, it's it, in its prime, it was producing about 180 horsepower, so it's quite a quite a bit more. Okay, and what's the induction that you're running there? So we run the 80 power throttle bodies. Um, these ones were actually made specifically for this for this engine, um, which we are very grateful to 80 power for. Um, but they make a fantastic noise, and they do they do work really well with the whole setup. I've heard this one scream past me, and it is a fantastic noise. But 180 horsepower, lightweight car, two words spring to my mind. Torque steer. Yes. Yeah, now, we originally had a few issues with torque steer, but we've, we've got around that, and we've actually worked on several solutions to, to sorting that out. So this one has run, or this car actually runs an equal length drive shaft adapter. So it means we run two length shafts, so there's no wind up on one shaft or another. It is equal. Okay. So it reduces the risk of, of torque steer. Um, the other thing we run is electric power steering, which also reduces the, the movement and the grabbiness of how it feels. And we run the diff slightly backed off, so we don't run it quite as tight. This runs a plate diff on it, so usually they're notorious for throwing people into hedges. This one is actually is actually quite a bit wound back so it's more controllable and and the car is actually very very usable 
So bo bottom end of the engine, which is the original um, A series and gearbox, is that, I know you mentioned the difference in the diff there, but gearbox and bottom end, are they standard? So the gearbox is actually a Jack Knight Involute dog box, which is quite rare. <laughs> and that is quite foreign to me. So. And, and they don't make um, the bits for them anymore. But this is actually a gearbox that was built and designed for the very early minis. So the 1960s one, this one is actually still retaining its 60s type gearbox, not the 80s type gearbox. So this is okay. actually quite a rare, rare box. It came from a rally car. So it's, it's okay. used to taking massive amounts of abuse and it has taken massive amounts of abuse for years and it has continued to take massive amounts of abuse under our, under our, uh, under our uh, ownership. So, um, I can notice there's things like headlamps are missing and so on. So what kind of weight are we talking about on this car? This car is actually 600 kilos. So okay. it's, it's, it's quite light. Um, there's a few things we could do to it to make it even lighter by chopping the wings off, putting cumber, but we wanted to keep it in the spirit of a mini and retain its original steel wings. Um, same with the roof. The roof is still steel. The only light and weight panels on this car are the bonnet, and the doors and the boot. The bonnet and bonnet and boot are fiberglass, and the doors are aluminium skinned. Everything else is is still steel. That's really impressive. On this, going back to this conversion, though, obviously we're taking two quite different bits of engine and mating them together. Now, I, I did a little bit of research, and there's quite a lot of work involved in modifying both the the head and the block to make those two um, mate together. Because then you need obviously a drive to the, the camshafts at the top through this tooth belt. Yes. So it's it's not a weekend job with a hacksaw. This one is it? It's not. No. Um, the originally three of the head studs line up. So three of the original factory mini head studs line up with the original with this BMW head. Okay. Out of how many? Eight. Eleven. Uh, okay. Is it the eleven eleven original mini head studs? Three of them line up. Um, and then what you do is you then drill the block to take the cylinder head. Um, you cut the end of the head off and mount a plate on the end to convert it to dry belt. And then you can run an external oil feed into the cylinder head. Um, there is a multitude of options with cooling. So you can either have it come through the block into the cylinder head via the normal route, which would be with a classic mini, or you can run a dry deck, which is what this has been done with the water pipe that runs straight round into the side of the head. Okay, that's quite interesting. And if somebody wants to do this conversion, specialist components, I know you've got on the windscreen there, they produce kits of various levels to do this, don't they? Yes. Yeah, specialist components, um, we've worked with them for years. They have been fantastic, and they do produce all the kits. Um, and their technical knowledge is, is fantastic. I, I can't recommend them highly enough. They are just very, very good. That's good to know. Well, that's really exciting. Let's have a quick look inside and see what we can see in there. Yeah. Okay, Ben, we're on the inside of the car now. Looking around, there's not many creature comforts. I noticed the uh, headlining's gone, the carpet's gone, the rear seat is gone, the passenger seat is gone. Um, we're down to the bare minimum in here. Yeah, um, it's what it's what we go within the limits of the of the rules and yeah we don't need any of these additional pieces um for modified so it is a stripped out full race car now so looking around stating the obvious you've obviously got the the battery there which is obviously quite a small one yeah so that's obviously down to weight main cut off switch yeah um modified gear lever by the looks of it yes yeah uh, and on the dash uh we've just got revs temperature and i'm sure the big orange light is that rev limiter no that's oil pressure ah okay uh, so you've got your little shift light at oh the top i see yes yeah the multifunction there no that's that's the big warning that if that comes on you need to switch it off very very quickly <laughs> we do have an oil pressure gauge as well but that definitely grabs yeah. the attention a bit quicker that, that is right in your line of focus so and I'm guessing down here, this is the electric power steering? Yes. So the power steering is from a Corsa C. Um, so it's, I mean, it was relatively straightforward to, to make and fit. Uh, we, we custom fitted this one ourselves. There are companies out there that will make the kit that fits. Um, but the we had a, a UJ made. So one section of it 
is Vauxhall Corsa. It's then fitted to a mini splined piece on the bottom. Um, and yeah, it just allows it to convert it. We can adjust the strength here. So, oh, okay. So it's got a toggle so we can go from having it where you've got to have arms like Charles Atlas all the way down to you can turn the steering with one finger. So it's quite, but we find that we can fine tune it for however we feel at certain, certain venues. And interesting, that Corsa electric power steering is a very popular conversion within the classic car market and coming into the kit car market as well. So yes. that does very much seem to be the way forward. I mean, I think when I first did this kit in 2013, the power steering column cost me £30. Uh, and the wiring was about £65. So it, it, was, it, yeah. it could be done really, really cost effectively. And of course, the other advantage is traditional power steering's that are run off the engine sat power, so this one doesn't. No, that's right. This one runs off the electric. In fact, uh, the first design of this used to have its own electric supply, so it wouldn't even take power from the alternator. Um, but now it, it runs with the alternator, and we didn't notice any any great loss. So it's it's really really useful to have. Brilliant. That's really interesting. Thanks, Ben. Let's have a quick look at the back of the car. Yeah, it's not a problem. Okay, he says turn it around. There we go. Okay, well, I'm guessing that's the fuel tank, and I'm guessing you're not going to be taking your mini on holiday with the size of that. No, it's about a two gallon tank, so it's quite a quite a small tank. But again, for hill climbing purposes and motorsport, we don't need a, a very big tank in this car. Um, but it does drink fuel quite quickly. Okay, so two gallons would that do you a whole day, or uh, it might just about do a whole day. Okay. Um, this I think this one at full chat is something like four mile to the gallon. Ah, okay. So it's it's not a conversion for economy then. Uh, this race conversion, no. The, no. the the actual road version of this engine is is quite economical, but this race version is 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 yes, it does does drink the fossil fuel quite well. So, and I'm guessing the blue iron is the fuel pump, and that's the pressure regulator. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it runs about three bar. Oh. Okay. Very simple, straightforward setup. Yes. But nowhere to put your suitcase. No, no. So, but uh, yeah, it's in, we've kept it in the middle for balance as well. So it's not a case of uh, oh, so you're too, much weight to, too much weight to one side or the other. It keeps it, um, keeps it all balanced and as close to the middle as possible. That's brilliant. Well, thank you, Ben, for showing this really fantastic car. I'm sure it's been a great interest to our viewers on 7Spot because I doubt many of them have seen that engine conversion before. And the other thing is, thanks for that great insight into how to get started at hill climbing. Yeah, it's not a problem at all. Brilliant. Now, I hope you've all enjoyed this. Remember, we're Seven Spot. I'm Trevor. And what we would like you to do is click those like, subscribe and share buttons because we've got lots more exciting videos coming up for you in the very near future. We'll see you soon.